welcome back to the Beach Bum Bookworm. I am Tiffany. Today I'm continuing my Spotlighting Cozy series. We are working our way through culinary cozies. We are on author C and D. I have a couple notes before I jump in. One, I said this in the first video, so if you haven't watched it, go watch it after this. Watch this one first and then go watch the other one. I have excluded for culinary cozies bakeries, coffee shops, candy shops, breweries, wineries, because there's so many of them. They're kind of their own subgenre within a subgenre. So they'll be getting their own spotlight. So if you like those, any of those I mentioned, don't worry, they'll definitely have their own spotlight. So this is all the other um, books and series that could be considered a culinary cozy. The other thing that I want to mention is that I excluded series that started and ended before the year 2000. And the only reason is because Sometimes those books are really hard to find. I have tried to find books and series that are older than that, and it, it's it's difficult, so I exclude those. If you would like me to include those, I will make a video including those. Just let me know in the comments below. Let me know anything else that you want to talk about in the comments below. Remember to hit the subscription, hit the notification bell. That's going to tell you when I put out new videos each week, and let's get started. Culinary Cozy's letters C and D in three, two, one, go. Go. first series is the Pizza Lover Mystery Series is by Chris Cavender. The book, the first book in the series is called A Slice of Murder right here. The main character in this is Eleanor Swift. She is the owner of a Slice of Delight Pizzeria. Not too much happens in the sleepy little town of Timber Ridge, North Carolina, which is fine with pizza extraordinaire Eleanor Swift. The spunky owner of A Slice of Delight is trying to mend her broken heart and could use a little quiet time. But when a late night delivery customer turns up dead, she's in for just the opposite in this delicious pizza debut. Seven books in this series. I love pizza. That sounds really, I love pizza. I'm excited about that one. So the next one is the Cackleberry Club Mystery Series by Laura Childs. I love this series, but I do have some, some things I want to say about it. Laura Childs is really wildly popular in, co in, with, in Cozies, and she should be. She's a fabulous author. She has another series. It's a tea shop series. It's great. This one, the Cackleberry Club series. So the first book is called Eggs in Purgatory. It'll be right here. The main characters in this are Suzanne, Petra, and Tony. Suzanne, I think, is technically the main character, but those two play such a big part. I'm including them. They own the Cackleberry Club. It's a cafe knitting and crocheting corner, and bookstore. This is my first note. Let me just say, this sounds like heaven on earth to me. If I found somewhere that would deliver Indian takeout, I would never leave. You just look for me there. It's like, it would be my, my home away from home, my heaven on earth, my, oh, I just, but, 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 <laughs> It's not probably the most realistic idea to think that a business could work with all of those different uh, interests all into one. I just don't know that that's realistic. But this is fiction, so I'm going to go with it. Love it. This particular book says, Susan, Tony, and Petra lost their husbands but found independence in each other and a life raft of, in a life raft of support, inspiration, fresh baked goods, and their own business. But when the Cackleberry Club Cafe opened its doors in the town of Kindred, who'd have guessed the cozy oasis would become the scene of a crime? Suzanne's lawyer is found in his, back, in his car out back of the Cackleberry Club with egg on his face and blood on the dash. Suzanne's taking the crime personally. The murder not only reveals a scandal in her late husband's past, but a stranger fleeing a cult sect is begging Suzanne for help. Now, discovering a link between a dead man with secrets and a runaway cultist may be putting Suzanne's own life on the line. There are nine books in this series. I really enjoy it. I, I usually read each one when they come out. The other note that I want to make is I do wish that Suzanne was... a little more nice. There are times when she definitely crosses a line between being rude and sometimes she can seem very 
pompous, which I just really dislike because it's such a fun series other than that. So, um, that's my, that's my only note, but I still always read the series. I still really enjoy it. It's just a little hang up that I have. The next one is the Farmer's Daughter Mystery Series is by Peg Cochran. The first book is called No Farm, No Foul. <laughs> cover is right here. The main character is Shelby McDonald. She's a lifestyle and cooking blogger in a small western Michigan town of Lovett. First in the Farmer's Daughter Mystery Series set on picturesque farm in Michigan where Shelby McDonald runs a popular lifestyle and cooking blog. On her blog, The Farmer's Daughter, Shelby McDonald is growing her audience as she posts recipes, gardening tips, and her experience raising two kids and running Love Blossom Farm in the small western Michigan town of Lovett. This is going on my TBR. That just sounds amazing. Working on the farm is demanding but peaceful until that peace is shattered when the minister's wife is murdered on Shelby's property during a fundraiser for a local church. But the manure really hits the fan when Shelby's good friend, veterinarian Kelly Thacker, emerges, emerges as the prime suspect. Shelby decides to dig in and find the murderer herself. As suspects crop up, she'll, move, she'll have to move fast before someone else buys the farm. This series says it includes delicious recipes. There are three in this series. I have read the Cranberry Cove series, which is also by Peg Cochran, Cochran, and it is great. So I will, not only does this sound fabulous and going on my TBR, but I know I enjoy the author. The next series is the Gourmet Delight Mystery Series by Peg Cochran. The first book is called Allergic to Death, right here. The main character is Gigi Fitzgerald. She is a gourmet care, uh, caterer. This series takes place in Connecticut. Preparing calorie conscious meals for the dieters of Woodstone, Connecticut, Gigi Fitzgerald knows a cheater when she sees one. And when, the mur and when murder is on the menu, she's ready to get the skinny on who done it. Business is looking up for Gigi's gourmet delight. And delight is spelled like light. Like the cooking is light. <laughs> Funny. All right. Thanks to her newest client and restaurant reviewer, Martha Bernhardt. Martha has the clout to put Gigi's personal meal plans on everyone's lips. But instead of dropping a few pounds, Martha drops dead from a severe peanut allergy right after eating one of Gigi's signature dishes. When the distractingly debonair detective Mertz identifies traces of peanut oil in Martha's last meal, Gigi suddenly finds her diet catering business on the chopping block. Now she'll have to track down with who tampered with her recipe before her own goose is cooked. This says it includes delicious and healthy delight recipes. Three books in this series. Sounds really fun. The next one is the Gourmet Girl series by Jessica Conant Park. The main character is Chloe Carter. She is known in chat rooms as Gourmet Girl. She's a food connoisseur and the survivor of failed romances. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, book one is called Steamed. It is right here. Chloe Carter's internet date commits the ultimate gastronomic faux pas he dies before dessert <laughs> it's not funny that he died it's just funny how they worded <laughs> it ever in search of the perfect meal and the perfect man 20 something grad student and food connoisseur chloe carter draws the line at speed dating but when the massachusetts native reluctantly signs up for the back bay dates she's soon com communicating with a guy after her own heart According to his online bio, Dinner Dude, Eric Rafferty, a blonde six-foot foodie, is a six-foot foodie. They meet at a five-star restaurant where everyone seems to know Eric, and he and Chloe are given the celebrity treatment. But their first date turns out to be their last. Before Chloe can say creme brulee, Eric is found in the men's room, fatally stabbed in the neck. Yikes. Suddenly, at the center of an investigation into the life of a man she barely knew, Chloe plunges into the cutthroat world of trendy restaurants. Her, her romantic life picks up again when she meets sexy chef Josh Driscoll, who's also the prime suspect in Eric's murder. This series says it features recipes, and there are five books in it. 
totally going on my TPR. That sounded really fun. The next series is one that I really, I, I enjoy. It is the five ingredient mystery series. It's by Maya Corrigan. The first book is called By C Cook or By Crook. <laughs> it's right here. The main character in this series is Val Dennison. See, she is the manager of a fitness club cafe called Cool Down Cafe in Chesapeake Bay. It says, take one burned out city girl and a crusty codger, a pinch of gossip and a dash of romance. Stir in a generous helping of murder and you've got the ingredients for one truly delicious mystery. I love that. Haunted by the car accident that ended her career as a cookbook publicist, Val Dennison has traded in the chaos of New York City for a quieter life near the Chesapeake Bay, living with her grandfather, the grumpy grandfather, in the tourist town of Bayport is hardly glamorous, but she enjoys working at the Cool Down Cafe at the local fitness club, and she finally has some time to work on her long-planned cookbook. But when, the but when one of the club's patrons is found dead, she'll have to cook up a scheme to find the killer. As the number of suspects rises like crabs in a bucket, it's out of the pan and into the fire for Val. If she can't find the culprit soon, she might as well chum in the water. This says it includes five ingredient delicious recipes from Val's cookbook that she's creating. There are seven books in this series. I've read, I think, the first three... At very, very good. Enjoyed them. The next one is one that totally went on my TBR upon reading it. I'm really excited about is the Mira Cola, Colo Mystery Series by Shelly Costa. The first book is called You Can Noli Die Once. <laughs> the cover is right here. That's funny. Oh, the main character is Eve um, Angelotta. She is the chef at a family Italian restaurant in Philadelphia says, in this entertaining and delightful mystery, an Italian chef and her cousins start their own investigation to clear their grandmother's name after she's arrested for murder. Oh, poor grandma. At Miracolo Northern Italian Restaurant, one can savor brilliantly seasoned veal or luscious risotto, but no cannoli. Never cannoli. Maria Pia Angelotta, Angelotta the spirit is... 66 year old owner of the philadelphia eatery that's been in her family for four generations has butted heads with her head chef over the cannoli ban more than once and when the head chef is your own granddaughter things can get a little heated fortunately eve knows how to handle when her nana dishes out what her nana dishes out but when maria pia's boyfriend is found dead in miracolo's kitchen bludgeoned by a marble mortar the question arises can a woman with this fiery and stubborn over cream filled pastry be capable of murder? The police seem to think so, and they put the elder Angelata behind bars. Eve and the sexy neighborhood attorney Joe Beck and the entire Maricola family try every trick in the cookbook to unravel a tangle of lies and expose a killer. Totally going on my TBR. I love um, books that are like, a total family is involved with like a family restaurant like this. I just really, really enjoy it. So I'm going to be looking into that one. Oh, the next series is another one that I just really, really enjoy. It is a catering series is by Isis Crawford. So the first book is called a catered murder. Each book in the series is a catered something, a catered birthday, a catered Christmas, whatever, and so on. So this one is called a catered murder. The cover is right here. The main characters are Bernie and Libby Simmons. They are sisters and they are the owner of a little taste of heaven catering and bake shop in New York. It says two sisters get into catering and crime solving in a delicious mystery. Bernadette Simmons goes by Bernie wasn't sure what to expect when she left LA and her no good cheating boyfriend to move back in with her family in New York. And her sister Libby had no idea what she was in for when she hired Bernie to work at her catering business. The two find themselves in the midst of a mystery they can sink their teeth into. Right now, they're baking cookies and slicing rare beef tenderloin to serve at a high school reunion. The dinner has a Dracula theme and a very strange guest of honor, Laird Wren, a New York best-selling author of vampire novels. Libby and Bernie know this will be an evening unlike any other, and they're proven right when Laird pours a glass of wine, takes a sip, and drops stone cold dead. 
Now with murder on the menu and Libby under suspicion, the sisters must put their heads together to figure out who done it in a mystery that promises to be deadly to the very last bite. This series includes recipes. There are 15 books in it. So much fun. I've liked every book in this series. At least three, four cups of coffee. If you haven't checked it out, totally do so. The next one is the Sugar Grove Mystery Series, another series that I've read and enjoyed. It is by Jesse Crockett. The first book is called Drizzled with Death. It's right here. I like the cover of that. The main character is Danny Green. She is a maple sugar maker at her family-owned sugar farm called Sugar Grove in New Hampshire. So the synopsis says, meet Danny Green, a fourth generation maple syrup maker dealing with a first class troublemaker. The annual pre-Thanksgiving pancake eating contest is a big event in Sugar Grove, New Hampshire. It's sponsored by the Sap Bucket Brigade aka the firefighters auxiliary and the green family farm provides the syrup danny green but when obnoxious outsider alonza speedwell flops face first into a stack of flapjacks during the contest greener pasture syrup falls under suspicion danny knows the police including her ex-boyfriend are barking up the wrong tree and she's determined to pull her loved ones out of a very sticky situation the odds may be stacked against her uh, to tap the real killer before some poor sap and her own family in trading the sugar house for the big house. Three books in that series. I really, really enjoyed that series. It was a lot of fun. The next one is the Goldie Bear series. I've read several in this series. Not all of them that are out, but I've read several in this series. So the main character in this is Goldie Bear. She is a caterer. Her, she is married to a homicide detective named Tom. The first book is called Catering to Nobody. It's right here. And this series takes place in Colorado. Catering awake is not Goldie's idea of fun. Yet the Colorado caterer throws herself into preparing a savory feast, including poached salmon and strawberry shortcake buffet designed to soothe 40 mourners. And her culinary efforts seem to be exactly what the doctor ordered until her ex-father-in-law, gynecologist Fritz Corman, is struck down and Goldie is accused of adding poison to the menu. Now, with the Department of Health impounding her leftovers and her ex-husband proclaiming her guilt and her business about to be shut down, Goldie knows she can't wait for the police to serve up the answers. She'll soon uncover more than one family skeleton and tons of secrets that the kind that can make Goldie the main course in an unsavory killer's next murder. 17 books in this series. It's, it's a lot of fun. The next one, another series I really enjoy. It is the Domestic Diva series by Krista Davis. The first book is called The Diva Runs Out of Time. Time spelled like the herb time. It's right here. The main character is Sophie Winston. This series takes place in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. Domestic diva Sophie Winston is about to learn that some dishes are best served cold. Few can compete with local celebrity Natasha Smith when it comes to entertaining, but Sophie Winston is determined to try. Her childhood rival may have stolen the spotlight and her husband, but this Thanksgiving, Sophie is determined to rob Natasha of the prize for Alexander of Virginia's stupendous stuffing shakedown. This series, uh, the one note I'll say about it, I just, because it's in my head right now, is Natasha and, and Sophie have a long withstanding um, relationship within this series, and there's a lot of uh, push and pull, and um, whew, yeah, yeah. The, this is not their first uh, collision or their last. She just needs the right ingredient to win the Virginia's Stupendous Stuffing Shakedown, which is a great name, but try to say it five times fast. Whew. But Sophie's search for the perfect turkey takes a, <laughs> takes a stumble when she stumbles across a corpse. And when the police find her name and photo inside the victim's car, Sophie will have to set her trusting aside to solve the murder or she'll be serving a prison grub. This includes not only delicious recipes, but entertaining tips, which is one of the things that I love about this series. It's a lot of fun. 13 books in that series. Check that one out. The next one, it's another series I really enjoy. It is the Country Store Mystery Series by Maddie Day. The first book in the series is called Flipped 
for murder right here. The main character is Robbie Jordan. She owns Pans and Pancakes Country Store Restaurant in South Lick, Indiana. In this freshly baked series, author Maddie Day lifts the lid on a small town in southern Indiana where a newcomer is cooking up a new start until a murder muddles the recipe. Nursing a broken heart, Robbie Jordan is trading in her life of the on the West Coast for the rolling hills of Southern Indiana. After paying a visit to her Aunt Adele, she fell in love with the tiny town of South Lick. And when she spots a for sale sign on a rundown country store, she decides to snap it up and put her skills as a cook and carpenter to use. Everyone in town shows up for the grand reopening of Pans and Pancakes, but when the mayor's disagreeable assistant is found dead, Robbie realizes that not all press is good press. With all eyes on her, she'll have to summon her puzzle solving skills to clear her name, unscramble the town's darkest secrets, and track down a cold blooded killer before she's the next to die. There are eight books in that series. It's a lot of fun. The next one is the Trudy Fine Mystery Series by Gail Deitch. The main character is Trudy Fine. She is the co owner of a catering company in Washington, D.C. The first book is called A Fine Fix. It's right here. With the table set, the food prepared to perfection, and the mariachi band sizzling, Trudy is uh, mellow as a margarita smoothie until a dead body is discovered floating in the pool. Things couldn't be better for Trudy Fine and her partner, Zachary Cohen. It's the first big job for their catering company, A Fine Fix, and everyone who's anyone in Washington, D.C. will be there for the Backyard Mexican Fiesta. Oh, this sounds like so much fun. When Zach is arrested as a prime suspect, Trudy sets out to clear him and find the real murderer. Life gets spicier than a jalapeno pepper when she realizes she's the focus of three men's affections, including the unnerving detective handling the case. Soon, however, Trudy is reaching for her favorite knife, but not to chop vegetables. This series says it includes uh, recipes, and there are four books in this series. It's definitely going to be added to my TBR. The next one is the Cook-Off Mystery Series. I think I've read, I know I've read the first book. I don't know if I've read others in this series. I enjoyed it. It is by Devin, Devin Delaney. The first book is called Expiration Date. It's right here. The main character is Sherry Frizzell. She is a competitive cook who works part-time with her dad. And she owns a Jackal, Jack Russell Terrier named Chutney, which is just a really cute name for a dog. This series takes place in Connecticut. After a short-lived marriage, Sherry Frizzell is living a single life to the fullest in her little Connecticut town, accompanied by her Jack Russell Terrier, Chutney. Her new passion is competitive cooking. But it turns out that murder is a surprise ingredient. With, with contestants from Maine to California and a $10,000 prize at stake, Sherry's latest competition, hosted by the CEO of an organic food company, is sure to be heated. But she's more than ready to step up to the stove. After all, she did win the award for the most creative cupcake back in high school. Today, she's hoping her flavorful pork tenderloin will sway the judges. Instead, it seems somebody else slay one of the judges. After Chef Burns falls face first into the seafood flatbread pizza, Sherry's dish is deemed suspicious. Now she'll have to stir through a stew of rule-breaking corruption and gossip to get herself off the chopping block and find out who turned this food fight fatal. This includes recipes, and there are four books in this series. I did read the first one, this one that I just talked about. It was really good. I forgot to look up what I rated it on Goodreads, but I know I rated at least three cups of coffee, which means I really enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking with me. That was Culinary Spotlighting Culinary Cozies, author C and D. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, may all your future reads be five stars. Bye, everyone.